Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time I'm going to go through the whole of topic uh, space with you. This is only a triple science video, however I'm sure if you do combine science you'll probably find this video quite interesting as well, so you can watch it as well. Anyway, I don't want to waffle on, let's get started with today's video. Studying space is incredibly important for physicists because of the fact that we can understand where we came from and in fact try and predict what will happen to us in the future. Most scientists are now in an agreement in how the universe began and that theory is the Big Bang Theory and what this theory states is that 14 billion years ago, the whole universe was condensed into a tiny, uh, smaller than a pinhead, and there was a huge explosion. And in this explosion, all the elements that are in our universe were created. After the Big Bang, there was lots of dust clouds, and this caused the formation of stars and protostars. Basically, what happened was um, gravity pulled um, large amounts of dust together um, and this formed protostars. As the protostar becomes hotter and hotter, hydrogen starts fusing inside of the star. And this is what creates um, the star's energy. Uh, this hydrogen fusion creates large amounts of energy and this is in fact what sustains life on Earth without this fusion inside of our sun. Um, we wouldn't have the heat that we need and we wouldn't have the light that we need in order to survive. Now the sun in our solar system is around 4.7 billion years old. This is how old our sun is, which seems like a really long age, but yes, um, it is 4.7 billion years old. And... Uh, you might know that there's other planets than ourselves in the solar system and these planets form because of the gravitational pull of our sun um, and this keeps the rocks orbiting around it. Now if we look at our solar system over here in the top right hand corner you'll see at the centre we have our sun and we have planets orbiting around it. The closest planet to the sun is Mercury, then we have Venus, then our Earth, and if you look at the Earth, its position means that we can support life. Um, it's not far enough away from the sun in the fact that it, it can still stay warm, um, and we get enough sunlight in order for plants to photosynthesize. So the Earth's position in the solar system is vitally important. Then we've got Mars, Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. It's a gaseous planet made of gas. Um, and then we have Saturn, then Uranus, then Neptune, then Pluto. Now our star, the Sun, is currently a main sequence star. This means that it is undergoing this hydrogen fusion um, and it's producing enough energy at the minute to sustain itself. Now, for a star like ours, like the Sun, this main sequence can last up to around 10 billion years. So, we don't need to worry about our star burning out anytime soon. However, larger stars or smaller stars, their lifespan can differ, as we will look at now. All stars go through this main sequence phase where they fuse hydrogen and they are stable for some amount of years. However, depending on their size affects the fate that they take, whether they are a large star or they are a smallish star. Now, small stars, uh, after fusing for so many years, they make heavier elements inside them and they actually form 
what is called a red giant. This is due to the fact um, that it's been fusing elements for so many years. Uh, it starts to swell up uh, as it makes these heavier elements inside it, and these elements start to fuse, and it makes a red giant. In fact, some of the smaller planets that maybe orbit the star uh, sometimes get engulfed as the star starts to expand. Now, when there are no more light elements to be fused in the star, uh, after the right red giant phase, what happens is um, it starts to collapse under its own weight. And this forms what is known as a white dwarf. This just means that fusion has now stopped in the star um, and it stays really hot and dense for um, many years to come. And from the Earth you can actually observe some white dwarfs. They stay hot for thousands and millions of years, um, but eventually they do start to cool and this will turn into a black dwarf. And once it's a black dwarf, it's often less visible as it's a lot colder. Um, and this will be the eventual uh, reality for our sun. It's not the largest of stars, so it shall follow this path. However, larger stars have an even more exciting future uh, once they finish uh, main sequence. Uh, they form a red supergiant as um, large elements start to form. And you can see that it's larger in my drawing. Um, so that's a red supergiant. And when red supergiants eventually collapse under their weight, uh, they create a supernova. And uh, this can go one or two ways after this supernova event, the explosion, uh, we can form a black hole or we can form a neutron star, depending on the weight of the star. Now, the really large stars that have created these black holes are incredibly interesting. Nothing can escape a black hole, not even light. They're incredibly interesting to physicists. Now, supernovas are, of course, incredibly rare, as are the formation of black holes. And often scientists don't get to observe supernovas themselves. However, they do get to observe the remnants from supernovas. And you can tell that a supernova has occurred uh, as supernovas produce all of these different elements uh, as they explode. If you go outside late at night and you look up, there is one uh, object in the sky that shines brighter than most and that is uh, of course the moon which takes up a lot of our night sky. But how did this object uh, get around the earth and why is it in constant motion around the earth? Well the moon is what's known as a natural satellite. And planets can have uh, many many natural satellites depending on the size of the planet. But why does it stay in constant motion around the Earth? And why does it not just leave and fly off into space? Well, what I've drawn here uh, is I've drawn the Earth and I have drawn the orbit of the moon. And the moon is pulled to the Earth by gravity. And it keeps its motion um, by having a velocity that is constant uh, going around the Earth. And because of this velocity, it stays on its orbit. And humans actually take advantage um, of this circular orbit by sending uh, artificial satellites into space. And when humans send up artificial satellites into space, they need to be really careful um, in choosing the correct velocity uh, for the satellite to fly at. The further away the satellite is, the slower the velocity needed.
And this is just because of the fact that the force of gravity, the further away you get from Earth, is less. And we now use these satellites for many things, such as GPS and communications. Now, we've already talked about uh, how the universe started, but we haven't talked about the fate of the universe and what scientists think will happen at the end of time. Well, uh, something that scientists do know for certain is the fact that our universe is expanding. And that just means getting bigger. And how do we know this? Well, we know this because of the fact galaxies are moving away from us. And we know this because of the wavelengths of light received from them stars and galaxies. The reason why we know this is because the light is what we call redshifted. And light becomes redshifted because as something is moving away, uh, the waves become elongated. You can observe this elongation of waves effect uh, by something called the Doppler shift. Um, if you ever have um, been in a car and you hear a fire engine or an ambulance, you'll notice that it sounds different if it's coming towards you or going away from you. And this is just Doppler shift. This is waves getting uh, elongated as they something moves away or getting scrunched together uh, if it's moving towards you. Um, in fact, it would be called blue shifted if it was moving towards. And don't get me wrong, some galaxies are moving closer together. However, the majority are red shifted. And this has led uh, astronomers and physicists to conclude that our universe is in fact expanding. But scientists don't just stop there. They start thinking about even further in the future. So we know that currently we are expanding, but what will happen uh, if this expansion stops? Well, this depends on the density of our universe. And this is why scientists are so interested for working out how much mass is in our universe. And you've probably heard the term dark matter before uh, describing matter, which we didn't know was there, but it is making up some of the mass of our universe. Well, if the mass of our universe is greater than a certain number, then our universe will eventually be pulled back into the center in something called the Big Crunch. So we will undergo this expansion, and this expansion came from obviously the Big Bang, which is pushing us all, all apart. Um, but eventually, gravity will win the battle, and everything will start to be pulled back to the center in a big crunch. Now, if the density of the universe um, isn't that great, then we will expand forever. And this will happen until all of the stars eventually burn out. And this is what's called the big yawn. And what's incredibly interesting is the fact that scientists do not know which one of these uh, is more likely or which one is going to happen. And that is where you guys will come in. Hopefully you've got some ideas and you can do a bit of background research and uh, find out which one you think is more likely to happen. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, once again, we have come towards the end of the video. Please remember if you did like the video to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel.